It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. What a no job. Can you remind me what's your name again? 17 people wanted to know how to sound more American. Here is our advice. What a no job. They found rope. Good for the set plans. So I do think you're getting a lot of air through here, which is great. That tends to be a struggle for people. So keep doing, mm -hmm. I, I would say keep doing that aspect of it. But um, I do think that it is very monotone. So some things that you could try doing here. So again, I kind of feel like we're doing like quit a new job. They found, they found rope. I do think on they found rope, you did go down. It was like, they found rope, they found rope. So you, you do have a little bit of movement there, but I think the bigger thing is that um trying to play around with these pitches. <laughs> Manual notes that this sounds like a, a placement exercise. I, th I think that's a fair <laughs> statement. If anything, I think, I think actually it might be even more of a pitch exercise. So, so what I would say for this is I would say, let's look at that middle one as an example, because I think that's going to be the best model. It's like, you do go down, they found rope, they found rope. How can we make this sound less monotone? Because right now it's just a little bit all the same. I think right now they and rope are about at the same pitch level, which I think is leading to this sounding so much, especially because there's only three words here. So we want to try to increase the variety more. So how can we do that? I would suggest on rope going a little bit higher and I would suggest on they going a little bit lower. So instead of they found rope, more they found rope, they found rope, they found rope. Michael, long story short. I think it's dragged out. I think if they had cut it by like two milliseconds, I don't think I would have noticed it, but I think it's just a step too long. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the stress balance here, I think is mm -hmm. definitely the, the main issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overstressed. There's a kind of common refrain we're seeing for a lot of these audios. So you, you, you guys have some overstressed audio, uh, overstressed, audio, overstressed words. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm here to make a long story short, to make a long story short, Versus to make a long story short, to make a long story short, um, just notice the difference there. To make a long story short, I got the new. Something else that you could play with too is um, one thing we mentioned earlier thought groups. Play around with the thought group, combine it, end your thought group like a word later. Like short I, to make a long story short I, I would be curious to see how that would change your sentence. I don't think you would necessarily have that same impact. Another thing, another advantage that would give you too is it would give you, it'll make that linking a little bit easier because you would get that fast D sound, that flap T on short I. To make a long story short I, to make a long story short I, um, I, I would definitely play around with that to see how that affects your sound. Um, and then for the second half, for the new job, and again job. Uh, I think more air, whether you're using the ah sound or the ah sound, if you're saying job or job, whatever one you're choosing, I think just getting a little bit more air there would be helpful because right now it's sounding a little bit closed off. Up. I'm going to play again. The job. The jaw, jaw versus jaw, mm -hmm. jaw, or ja, ja, whichever, whichever one is mm -hmm. um, you, you prefer. Those would be my big things there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, agreeing with Ahmed's assessment that it seems a little drag dragged out. Mm -hmm. Other things for that audio? Um, no, I think you gave really, really great tips there. Um, one thing that the remember the things are, are relative, right? Oh. It, it, the rhythm is is stress timed. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I have a lesson on that. Maybe you have a lesson on that. I don't know, uh, but um, I'm not going to go into what that is. But the as I said, we want to make sure that those unstressed syllables are unstressed, which I think is is very good in this recording, right? The unstressed syllables mm -hmm. are smaller. But then when we talk about, okay, the focus word, right? It's like, yeah, okay, it's a little longer, right? It's, it's gonna stand out a little bit more, but uh, number one, you don't wanna necessarily emphasize it unless you have a special reason to do it. It shouldn't stand out yeah. too much, right? Like to make a long story short, right? it's too much. Um, but then also, right, long story short, long story short, long story short. It's, mm -hmm. It's going to be a little bit louder and longer as a focus, but not like excessively. Yeah. Right. So you want to keep that balance, that relative balance. Yeah. Can you remind me what's your name again? I would like your A sound to be stronger. I'm getting name versus name. Can you remind me what's your name again? Yeah, I think your A sounds a little bit too weak. Uh, and that's 
you know, if it's a reduced part of your word, you can kind of get away with that. But because this is your stress. Can you remind me what's your name again? You know, um, stress words, you need to make sure that that vowel sound's coming in really clear. So it's not name, it's more name. Can you remind me what's your name again? The other thing I would say too on that is I think you're almost kind of rushing the vowel sound a little bit. Can you remind me what's your name again? Name, name versus name, name. That M sound, you really don't want to come in until the very end. Get the vowel sound clear first. Then you can move on to the consonants. English is paying attention to vowel sounds. It's how people understand you clears. Um, besides that, though... Can you remind me what's your name again? I like your stresses. I think your stresses are on the right spot. You know, so I do think... I think you have all the pieces. I think just changing the, those aspects of name would have made a pretty big difference on this sentence, honestly. I find it pricing to be a total ripoff. Um, I do think it's some opportunities for some more reductions, but I think the bigger thing is that this to me doesn't feel like a natural sentence that you would hear in a conversation. It sounds to me like you're reading. I find it pricing to be a total ripoff. Because you're kind of doing da 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 I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. Um I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. Cause I feel like you could probably make an argument that you have I find, I find the, I find, one thought group. Price into, second thought group. Be a total rip. To be a total third thought group. Rip off. Fourth thought group. So you you have a lot of um, I think you have a lot of stress words, and that's what's causing that rhythm to kind of go like up and down and up and down. Okay, so my biggest recommendation here is hey let's maybe, can we take off some of these stresses, um. Maybe just stress pricing. I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. Stress rip. Pricing rip. I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. Uh, another option, though, would actually be stressing total. You know, English really, really likes stressing adverbs, especially adverbs that um, kind of exaggerate. So I think total is a great opportunity for stress, like a total ripoff. I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. You know, honestly, you probably don't need the I find. I would probably just do the pricing's a total ripoff. Like, I would take off the I find because I don't. When, when would I say this with a friend? Like, I find the pricing to be a total ripoff. Like, I, I, I don't think I would ever personally say that. But again, I'm, I'm imposing my own <laughs> kind of uh, lexicon, my whole manner of speaking onto this. Um, but if it were me saying, I'm just like, their pricing is a ripoff. Their pricing is a total ripoff. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Tough concept to wrap my head around. Um, things are standing out here. You have a lot of stresses. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. It's a tough concept. Even tough in, in some ways is getting some stress. But your heavy stress there is concept, which I like. Um, but then to wrap my head around. To wrap my head around. I would say for the sake of experimentation, I would try to cut down on some of your stresses because um, I think that's going to give you more opportunity to flow because right now you're also kind of speaking very carefully, very slowly and things like that. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. To wrap my head around. Whereas if you cut down some of those stresses, like it's a tough concept, it's a tough concept to wrap my head around, to wrap my head around. That's just going to let you flow more. It's going to allow you to do more reduction. It's going to help a little bit with linking. Um, other quick things. It's a think. tough concept to wrap my head around. Things that are standing out for you. Uh, well, the number one biggest thing, um, and I think this will give you like a gigantic boost uh, for this recording. Uh, so we talk a lot about the, okay, there's stress syllables and there's unstressed syllables, right? Mm -hmm. But I think I realized a little while ago that there's not enough attention paid to the unstressed syllables. And so I, I find students, they'll tend to say, like, okay, it's a tough concept. They'll get the stresses. But then for the words that aren't stressed or the syllables that aren't stressed, they don't unstress them. They just say them sort of in like a neutral flat yep. thing, 100%. right? So 100%. I'm hearing you say like, it's a tough, it's a tough. So yeah, like tough goes up higher, but you're not saying it's an a uh, smaller. Mm -hmm. So it's that contrast that we rely on in English. Mm -hmm. So you want to say like, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough concept. Which also plays back into pitch because I don't yeah. think you have a wide enough range. And this, this 
part of the thing when I was talking about stress is I think a lot of words are coming off as stressed because mm -hmm. the pitches level is staying so high for so many of them. And also what you're mentioning, the speed is staying very consistent. Where are the reductions? Where are they? Well, <laughs> there are not. It's a tough concept. It's a tough concept. Whereas it's a tough concept. So by removing some of those stresses, take it off stress off of tough. That's going to allow you to flow more. You'll be able to introduce more reductions more easily, play around with pitches to have a wider range, um, things like that. Nothing is particularly hard if you divide it into small jobs. I think the biggest thing that's going to have an impact here is going to be the E sound. Okay, E, E. So for instance, um, that, that E sound i'm hearing a lot but the reality is you want more of a short i sound so instead of like nothing it's more nothing instead of ease it's more is nothing is nothing is so i would i would practice saying that nothing is nothing is nothing is okay uh also like divide it into divide it into okay so i would also be paying attention to that get something out of your system it means to do the things you've been wanting to do so you can move on. Okay. A couple words I'd like to hear you say again. Uh, do. Do with that ooh sound. I figure give me a lot of like ooh, do, do. We hear it twice. It means to do the thing. Do, do you hear that? Do the things. Do the versus do the, do the, do the, do the, do the. Uh, to do the thing. To do, to do, to do, to do. Okay. Um, so just some things there. Uh, we hear that again. Do the things you've been wanting to do. So wanting to do versus wanting to do. Okay. So let's just say for that ooh sound, it could be a little bit lower, a little bit more open. This is a very common thing too, because, um, this ooh sound is one of those universal vowels. Almost every single language has an ooh sound. Okay, Mimo, I'm going to bring you back. Some questions for you about the ooh. Uh, Anything similar to like an ooh. ooh, or maybe it's more like ooh, or sounds like that. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Can you do it again? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So even that sounds a little high, right? Like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, hi, it's high. Ooh. You know, versus like, again, American English, ooh would be more ooh, okay. ooh, uh, ooh. Okay. Um, ooh. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, you know, overall, overall, if I compare that, there is no, would be no comparison, like uh, higher in pitch, you know. Thank you so much for helping us with our pronunciation. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you for sending the file, Tim. Thank you. This is you. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, for this file. Thank you so much for helping. Listen to how you say four. I want you to really listen to how you say four here. Thank you so much for helping for for i love that r sound that r sound is so rich mimo if you hear that can you give me a thumbs up on that four do you hear that four much for 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 oh that's so great i could listen to that just down this four 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 go to sleep to that it's great um thank you so much for helping us with our pronunciation we really appreciate it so what i would say is inconsistency there are so that four demonstrates to me that you can go low and open with your placement and your breath. I can hear that. Thank you so much for for. Can you say this whole sentence from that spot? Thank you so much for. 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 I would really. I know you can do it because you did it. That, that's the hard thing with like teaching. It's like you hear students do it, so you know they can do it, but then they don't. <laughs> and that's not really a critique. Look, I know it's easier said than done. I 100% understand that. But but I know you can because I'm hearing it. Thank you so much for helping. Because again, it sounds that the thank you is really high. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you. You're, especially thank. Your thank is up here. Thank, thank versus thank. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Compare my thank you with yours. Thank you so. Thank you, thank you. Do you hear that difference? Thank you so much. Okay, so I think that the big issue is the. It might be that an sound, okay. But in reality, it's super reduced for thanks. You don't even really need it to be super strong. So I would just try to get really thank, thank, thank you so much, thank you so much. 
I would just, if you only had one exercise to practice this week, I would just practice saying thank you so much over and over again. Thank you so much. 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 Oh, man. I don't think so. I think I'll pick another one. Okay. Oh, man. Man. A very minor thing. I do think man is slightly tense and high. You could get a little bit more breath through, but it's not a big deal. You will hear some native speakers that also pronounce it kind of tense. Oh, man. Because I'm hearing man versus oh, man. Oh, man. I would say that more as man, but that's just me. Oh, man. I don't think so. I don't think so. Listen to how you're saying so. I don't think so. I'm hearing so, so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Versus I don't think so. I don't think so. Getting a little bit more breath through at the end of your O sound, I think would be very beneficial. I don't think so. 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 So I would just say a little bit more breath at the end of your O sound would be great. If you can. My God, I don't know if I want that much money. It's a lot of responsibility there. I appreciate the well wishes. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate it. Thanks, so. I think I'll pick another one. Your consonants are kind of taking over here. You're getting the... I think I'll pick another one. I think I'll pick another one. I think I'll pick... And the reason for that is your consonants are very strong. It's like, think I'll pick your K sounds. I think it's the Ks. I think I'll pick another one. Can you say, I think I'll pick, I think I'll pick. Notice how weak my K sound is. I think I'll pick, I think I'll pick. And so I think I'll pick more. I think I'll pick. Or even better would be, I, th I, th I think I'll pick a, 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 I think I pick a. I think, so. I think I'll pick another one. Pick another one. Can you say, pick another one, pick another one. So again, not letting your K sounds uh, get as much breath out as you're allowing. So I say, pick a, it's more pick a, pick a, just very gently raising the back of your tongue to make contact. Pick a, pick a, I think I'll pick another one. Thanks for sending that file. We do appreciate it. Take a listen to our second one. Can you remind me what's your name again? Yeah, turn Can you remind me what's your name again? Things are jumping out at you. I'll play it one more time. Can you remind me what's your name again? Name again? So again, we have that upward intonation at the end of again. Can you remind me what's your name again? So hearing that intonation pattern, I might use something like that too. You know, can you remind me what's your name again? Um, if I can imagine a situation where um, maybe I'm trying to be um, really polite or I'm like, oh, I forgot your name and I'm embarrassed. So I'm like kind of asking you this question in like a really easy, like I don't want to be, be really loud about it. I want to be kind of quiet. Can you remind me what's your name again? Almost like mm -hmm. I'm asking for permission. Is this mm -hmm. okay that I'm asking you for your name again? Yeah, yeah. So that is different than the first, um, the first recording we heard. Yeah. Um, the where the intonation was just a little different from the from the beginning. So it it created a different story in my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one, it, it reminded me of that situation where I'm kind of like, oh, I'm a little embarrassed. Can you remind me what's your name again? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. I might use an upward intonation just for that reason. So that yes, sir. first thing. Yes, sir. So. Can you remind me what's your name again? I want to highlight that linking going on at the first part. Can you remind me? Can you remind me? Can you remind me? Like, um, I'm personally okay with that. Um, I think this is a sort of linking that a lot of people who learn English aren't necessarily doing. Like, I think there's a lot, you're really weakening your, your consonant sounds a lot here. Can you remind me what? Can you remind me, like, you're, that end in, like, can you is almost completely gone. Like, mm -hmm. can, you, can you remind me? And that's not a bad thing. I don't personally think it's a bad thing. I think in rapid speech, that's, that, that is something you'll, you'll hear. Um, so I'm really, I'm personally okay with that. Um, can you remind me what's your name again? Can you remind me what's your name again? Um, but it's kind of interesting. So, like, the, the can you remind me? I, I I like that linking. Can you remind me what's your name? What's your? But the the what's your? So it's like I, I think some of the linking is very natural sound, especially for rapid speech in the beginning. But then the what's your? I, I don't think you're as likely to hear that. It's, again, it's one of those cases where it's not wrong, but I do think you're going to be more likely to get like more of that what's your or what's your. 
um, than mm -hmm. the what's your, that, that S sounds pretty clear. I mean, what's your name again? Like, what's your name again? What's your name again? But it, I don't know, what are your thoughts on that? To me, that, that I think that's going to be less, less common. Yeah, I agree. It's probably less, less likely that you'll hear that TS, what's your, what's mm -hmm. your, I mean, you can, it's, there's nothing, mm -hmm. there's no rule that says you, you must make it a CH sound to link it together. Um, but probably more likely that you'll hear that what's your instead mm -hmm. to kind of link it together because it's just a little bit easier to say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and yeah, I think if, you know, that, that beginning part of the sentence, can you remind me? Yeah, it's a little um, kind of that, that linking that's happening in the reductions, a little um, less precise than maybe mm -hmm. the first recording mm -hmm. or, um, but it's not, I think in the context of a conversation, yeah, if you're kind of, can you remind me? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of mm -hmm. that kind of a of a, of, mm -hmm. a of a facial expression, you know. Can you yeah. Remind me, what's your name again? Yeah, you know, like again, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that you're like, oh, mm -hmm. which is um, great because yeah. that's that's uh, I don't know about your students, but I think for my students, that's the kind of that's kind of the pronunciation that they often are working towards. Is it's hard? Sure. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, using those linkings and things like that, not. For a lot of people who learn English, you, you, you're less likely to find it. Can you remind me what's your name again? What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your? That part does your... stand out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Can you remind me what's your name again? What's your, maybe there was like less of a T sound. What's your name again? What's your? Yeah, that's, because originally I was thinking, I think it's standing out also because of pitch. Can you remind me what's your name again? Can you remind me what's your, what's you your that jump? Again? Can you remind yeah. me what's your? Can you remind me what's your, what's your remind me what's again? your, um, I think maybe that pitch may have gone a little high. Can you remind me what's your name again? What's your, but it's all, it's, also, it's not quite an S, but it's almost not like C-H either. It's like, can you remind me what's your name? It's like, what's your, it's what's like, your, what's your, so it's like almost yeah. like removing the T and then starting with an S that then morphs into an S-H. It's like, what's yeah. sure, <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. sure. Um, can you remind me what's your name and I think yeah. that um, in general, I would have committed to something. I would have either committed to, I probably would have committed to SH, like, what's your name? Instead of what's your, more what's your name? What's your name? Um, instead of having that S that kind of slides into it. Um, but that's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The other thing, again, I would say is pitch. Can you remind me what's your name? And just while we're kind of on the topics of like kind of intonation kind of had that upward so the way that this speaker kind of linked that full phrase now it becomes a yes no question kind of because it starts with can you mm -hmm. yes or no mm -hmm. so it has that upward intonation so it's kind of um uh so i kind of liked that i guess it kind of fits yeah. with the mold of a yes no question mm -hmm. uh, because it was more more like one phrase i think that first mm -hmm. one we listened to was kind of more separated mm -hmm. and that's why it sounded like yes no and then a wh but now it's kind of one yes no mm -hmm. question um so what's your name again um mm -hmm. and it's like a, pol a polite way to ask again? can you remind me what's your name again rather mm -hmm. than just saying what's your name again you know mm -hmm. you're asking it more polite way can you Thanks, remind sir. me what's your name again yeah, I think um so i thought that was appropriate for for yeah. this the way that it was all linked together and in mm -hmm. one phrase yeah yeah i think this sounds really clear you know i think this sounded pretty good my my biggest thing is play around with that what's your uh, but you made the comment about sounding like a robot. I don't. I don't think this sounds. I don't think this sounds robotic. I don't get that feel. Can you remind me what's your name again? I think you have enough range of pitches that it's it avoids that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Remeza, you're safe. I do not believe you're a bot, or if you are a bot, saying that you're not a bot. Um, <laughs> I believe you that you're not a bot. <laughs> yeah, but I think I think it sounds pretty good actually. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Mm. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. So the first thing that really stands out to me is around. <laughs> it's really heavy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tough like, concept to wrap my head around. Wrap my head around. My head around. Would you say it that way? No. I'm trying to think of a situation where I would, and it's uh, I'm struggling a bit. Yeah, it would um, definitely be a, a weird edge case. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think I wonder if they're treating it like a phrasal verb. You know, phrasal verbs typically you're stressing that particle. Yeah. Um, and wrap, like, to wrap my head around something. Wrap my head around something. And I think one thing, if wrap around, I would consider a phrasal verb. However, I think the the typical stress is on uh, the the object. Like, 
Yeah. Um, I don't think you're typically going to found it on a round. Um, yeah, d d I, I would, I would say not. Um, in fact, for that reason, I would not consider wrap around a phrasal verb. I have a yeah, special yeah. definition of phrasal verb, but mm -hmm. that's a different topic. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so the, the thing that I would say here, cause round obviously has some stresses around, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're kind of, again, you're drawing it out a little, you're making it stand out too much. And especially cause it's the end of the sentence and we need to sort of drop off the clip there. Um, it's going to affect it. It's going to make it sound like it doesn't come up as much. So it's instead of like around, right? It's like mm -hmm. around. It's a lot, just a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Around. It's around. Around. Right around. Yeah. Around. And that's, that's a, I'm sure you, you, your students do this too. Um, I see a lot of mine is that a lot of vowel sounds are shifting. A lot of students are making shifts mm -hmm. to vowel sounds. It's hard, for, especially depending on the vowel. It's hard for people to keep a static sound for the full duration. So like I said, you and ow, ow, you get like ow. Uh, or, or like things like that, you get, get some movement. Um, whereas again, you do want it to be a little bit more static. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, it's a tough concept. To... I think that part sounds great. I, I, I really like that. It's a tough concept. You're adding some stress on tough, but you're also adding a heavier stress on concept, which I think is fine. It's a tough concept. I almost feel like maybe a slight long eye for its. It's a tough. Maybe not. I'd have to hear it a couple times. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Yeah, I definitely think it's to wrap my head around. Like that that's the part that mm -hmm. I would target for that part. There's no way it will make it back in time. Play again. There's no way it will make it back in time. There's no way we'll make it back in time. So I liked that the overall stress pattern there, the uh there's no way. So I heard good a good jump in pitch on no way and it sounded longer on those words as well. Um we'll make it back in time. Um can you play it for me one more time? Yeah, of course. There's no way we'll make it back in time. There's no way we'll make it back in time. So to kind of talk about uh that last part of the sentence, um the vocal quality again sounded a little like it, your voice was kind of giving out there at the end uh we'll make it back in time so um even the word time just thinking about the pitch of the voice um it kind of like the voice just kind of got lost there there's no way we'll make it back in time i kind of heard just like a little mm. like the voice just kind of went away mm -hmm. where if you kept the voice kind of going a little bit stronger um there's no way we'll make it back in time you could have ended time you know, in a nice downward pitch, but you could have had good, good intonation and good quality that whole way, um, rather than it kind of fizzling out at the end. Um, but I did like that first part. I thought, no way. That sounded really natural to me. It sounded like it was stressed and kind of stood out to me. Yeah, kind of get into the vocal fry territory a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, next one here. Can you remind me, what's your name again? Uh, I would have cut down your pause between, can you remind me? Um, what's your name again? I would I wouldn't have paused so long between them. Um, so I said, can you remind me? What's your name again? A little bit too much. Can you remind me? What's your name again? Um, can you remind me what's your can you remind me what, what's your name again? Um, can you remind me? What's your name again? What's your name again? Um, what's your name again? Um, I, I think again your stresses probably could have raised your pitches a little bit more. Can you remind me? Can you remind me? Can you remind me um, again, talk about, listen to some of the other files that we talked about for the can you remind me? Cause I think you get some more natural intonation patterns. I don't think this is wrong, but I don't think it's what you'd be likely to encounter in normal speech and say, can you remind me? Like, can you remind me? I think that's going to be a more common phrase and way of saying that. What's your name again? And also that, what's your, that linking there with the what in the is again. Um, so those would be my major comments there. There's no way we'll make it back in time. Well, that was fast. There's no way we'll make it back in time. There's no way we'll make it back in time. No, no way we'll make it back in time. There's no way we'll make it back in time. No way we'll make it back in time. Um, very reduced, which is I'm again in favor of. I'm glad you're experimenting with that. There's no way we'll make it back in time. I actually don't. There's no way we'll make it back in time. I don't actually really have a whole lot to. To say about this, I, I, you know, you have a lot of reductions. This will, I think, this will sound pretty natural in a conversation and things like that, which is great. Um, if I were going to say anything, it'd probably be a little nitpicky on back. 
Maybe we'll make it back and die. Back, back versus back, back. I do think your your ass on could be slightly stronger, but again, there's also lots of regional things that kind of come into that too. So that's not even necessarily a problem. Maybe we'll make it back in time. Time, time. Maybe also a little bit on time with the eye. In time. Time versus time. Um, so maybe your your eye sounds slightly reduced, but again, it's a reduced word, so it's, it doesn't necessarily have to sound perfect. Um, um, let me make it back in time. Uh, Ahmed asked, the back is the most stressed in this case? There's no way we'll make it back in time. Yeah, and that's okay. I think in this sentence, you can stress back. I don't I don't personally have an issue with that. Um, I think Jonas, actually, this actually is pretty good. Can you remind me what's your name again? What's your so can you remind me what's your name again? Okay, I think the overall intonation sounds okay. Can you remind me what's your name again? Mm -hmm. And I kind of just da 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 da. Um, can you remind me what's your name again? Um, can you remind me what's your name again? Let me play it again. No. Yeah. Can you remind me what's your name again? Yeah, what's your I name it's again? Flat. It gets a little flat there. Yeah. What's your name again? What's your name again? Uh -huh. Can you remind me what's your name again? I probably would have had a bigger change. I might have kept the overall kind of downward trajectory of my voice, but I might have had a bigger change instead of, what's your name again? What's your name again? There would have been kind of a bigger dip down lower. And I think, Jeff, that's kind of what you mentioned earlier for some of the speakers. You can drop your pitch even lower on some words to give you more of a range. Um, yeah. So that maybe is what I would have done at the end of that instead of, What's your name again? Mm -hmm. That kind of made it like this. Um, can you remind me, uh, what's your name again? What's your name again? If you want to just keep going, what's your name again? Just a bigger dip down rather than name again, mm -hmm. name again. I think, I, think it's, like that. I think it's a fair answer. Can you remind me what's your name again? Okay, let's maybe, I'm kind of hearing two thought groups. Uh, I'm not sure if you are, but I'm hearing like, can you remind me, pause, can you remind me what's your name again? Slight pause. Okay, so let's maybe start with the first half. Can you remind me what? Can you remind me? Can you remind me? Yeah. One thing is, I don't necessarily want to say like I'm hearing something wrong, but what, what I I don't know if you know if you heard this in conversation, I don't know if you would hear people saying this sentence in exactly in the exact same way because of I think the intonation sounds a little off to me. Yeah, no, I hear it too. Um, and it's not like it's, uh, it's the intonation to me sounds a little different than how I would pronounce it, probably. Mm -hmm. um, although it, it doesn't sound like it's incorrect, like you're saying, it's yeah. not wrong, because intonation, mm -hmm. there's lots of ways to do it. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of right ways to do it. So um, can you remind me? Can you remind me? Can you um, can you remind me? Can you remind me? The way you just yeah. did it sounds... can you remind me? Like it's a can you remind me? Like can you it's a remind or remind? I, I think that yeah. remind remind. Like I, I think um, I would recommend having a a higher pitch on the my, but a sharper falling intonation. Like can you remind me? Can you remind me? I, I think to me that would make it sound a little s smoother. Can you remind me? Can you yeah. remind me? Yeah, and I would probably start higher. The pitch. Of, can you remind me? Mm -hmm. Can you remind me? Mm -hmm. I probably was overall start mm -hmm. higher at the beginning of the sentence rather mm -hmm. than da 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 da, rather than mm -hmm. coming up mm -hmm. to it. I probably would start mm -hmm. higher and then go down. Mm -hmm. That's actually a pretty common strategy you'll see with questions is the whatever is starting your question word, like whatever question word you have at the beginning, sometimes starting at a slightly higher pitch and then dropping and then going back up um, for later. I think it's a pretty common strategy you'll see with questions. Can you remind me what's your name again? What's your name again? What's your name? I think stresses. Remind me what's your name again? Name again? So I feel like you gave me a head fake. Like you, you made it sound like you were gonna have the heaviest stress on name. Remind me what's your name again? But then you added another stress. You put a second stress for me on again. What's your name again? Um, I, I would cut one of those out. I would make either, like if the again part is what you think is really important, then make name a little weaker and vice versa. If name, and if I were saying a sentence, name for me would probably be the more likely stress. If name is your stress, I keep that, but then weaken the again. Cause I think right now it's really strong. So it kind of catches your listener a little off guard. Remind me what's your name again? 
I agree. Yeah, the the upward intonation on again is what I the first thing I heard when I heard the full this full mm -hmm. sentence, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, it it stood out to me as feeling a little unnatural, um, and also because uh, what's your name again? Um, you know, kind of a, it's a WH question. So typically mm -hmm. that will kind of go down at the end anyway. Mm -hmm. What's your name again? Mm -hmm. You know, what time is it? Where are you going? Those would have more typical mm -hmm. downward intonation at the end. So um, it feels more natural to me to have, yeah, again, going down. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me, what's your, uh, what's your name again? Mm -hmm. What's your what's name your again? Yeah, and again, name, name, again. name would have the highest pitch, would have mm -hmm. the stress, and then again mm -hmm. would go down in intonation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, um, it just turns like the pitch is on like name again, name again, name again, like notice that climb, like name, then going down, uh, and then going back up again, like name again, versus, uh, I would have gone down, 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 like name again, name again, name again. Mm -hmm. And this is something I'd love to know your thoughts on this pitches. And I think that I think my students aren't using enough of them. I think a lot of my students are kind of stuck in this, like maybe like three to four pitch range, you know, they have their base. They know they need to go up they need to go they know they need to go down but what they're not doing is they don't go to extra step down or they don't mm -hmm. go to extra step up you know so you know if you're only operating on three pitches that's fine it works but it can make you sound flat can make you sound monotone can make you sound like you're missing out on some yeah. extra emotion you know so being willing especially on reduced phrases it's like name again it's like again again i would really recommend playing with again it's okay to make both of those syllables at the same pitch, but for experimenting, for playing around, for trying new things, I would say try to take them a step lower. Uh, again, don't have them at the same pitch level, go a little bit lower, um, just to kind of expand your range a little bit. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Play that again, and Josh, I'll let you start. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Hmm. It kind of feels like the opposite of the first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, I don't really know. Like, <laughs> play it one more time. Yeah. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it's it's pretty good, I think, overall. But mm -hmm. um, the concept, which, I mean, obviously, you're trying to make concepts stand out. Mm -hmm. But it almost sounds like it's, it's kind of too much, in a way. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough concept. concept. It's that con. It's super dragged out, right? Yeah. So it's a tough concept. It's a tough yeah. concept. Tough concept. And mm -hmm. that's so it's so tough to get the balance, right? Because we're telling you guys, like, hey, for the stress syllable, make it louder longer, right? And then so you do that, and then it's like disproportionate. And so it's yeah. like, what do you mean? I gotta make it shorter now? <laughs> It's, um, you know, with stress words, there's two ways to do it. The, the first way is raising the pitch. Second way is slightly lengthening your vowel, but the key word there is slightly. I think we're yeah. probably overdoing it a little bit on concept. I like your reductions. Mm -hmm. it's, a tough con it's a tough, it's a tough, great. I, I think that sounds really good. Um, sounds really open, lots of air coming through, lots of resonance. Um, mm -hmm. It's a tough concept. Also pitches I like, it's a tough, it's a tough, so you're building up, which is great. I have to wrap my head around. Your, your stressed words, though, are just, I would say, slightly overstressed. It's a tough concept. Tough concept. Concept. Mm -hmm. Do that a little faster. It's a tough concept. It's a tough concept. Mm -hmm. Don't drag out con more. In fact, you just mentioned it there. <laughs> just mentioned it there, right? Um, mm -hmm. So you're dragging out that that con sound. Um, but you're also doing it for head as well. I have to wrap my head around. To wrap my head around. To wrap my head around. Pitches don't pitches are like staircases. Don't go too high with the pitch change. Otherwise, it's going to sound exaggerated. To wrap my head around, maybe a little bit much versus to wrap my head around. You know, don't go too high on the, the pitch change. Exactly. Um, other things there? Uh, I don't think so. Um, it was it was a very good recording overall. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, lots of great stuff there. Manuel, thank you for sending that. Next up, I can take the lead. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Okay, stress on tough. It's a tough concept. To wrap it's a tough concept. It's a tough concept. Um, there's nothing wrong with putting stress on tough. It is going to be slightly unexpected. So, you know, in the right context, it's perfectly fine. Um, this is not sounding to me like it's a neutral situation, though. No? Um, like you're really emphasizing that that's what that is tough. I would say a compromise may be to put that heavy stress on tough, but then also put a heavy stress on concept. 
it's a tough concept. It's a it's a tough concept. Doing right, it's a tough concept. It's a tough concept or something like that. Um, I think would be a, a slightly more common situation there than just having to stress on tough. Tough concept to wrap my head around. I also think kind of similar to the previous person. I think head distress is a little bit strong. Concept to wrap my head around. Wrap my head around. Um, those are probably my big things there. Other things are standing out to you here? Hmm. Well, I mean, I largely agree with you uh, on all that. Um, putting it on top, to me, it doesn't, I mean, it, yeah, it does sound a little bit like it's a special situation, but it, it, it sounds very natural to me. Um, hmm. Like, again, it's the purpose, yeah. right? Like, no, it's, it's like, sorry, we no context. It's, it, it's a tough concept. It's a tough concept. But even, right? when and, even when you're saying it that way, to me, you're also adding some stress. Like, it's a tough course. concept. You're adding that extra stress on concept, which I think... Yes. I'm trying to play numbers. I'm trying to be like, okay, yeah, like, yeah, can yeah. this work in that isolated situation? Yeah, sure. Perfect. But mm -hmm. broad scale, what's most likely to be helpful? Probably just stress and concept. Second highest, stress tough and concept. Third highest, maybe just tough. You know, in my yeah. opinion, in, there, in terms of like the spectrum of the range mm -hmm. of frequency. Um, probably, probably, yeah, we can agree on that. Um, so it's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Uh, can you play the audio one more time? Yeah, let's, let's, especially for a second. Yeah, it's a push. tough concept to wrap my head around. Hmm, it's hard for me to pick things out here. The linking seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to hear that second half. I think. It's a tough concept to wrap my head around. Something to me sounds, I want to hear the vowels concept to wrap my head around head head, head. I, want to, I want to hear head concept to wrap my head around how do you say head 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 to me the it sounds to me like the back of the tongue is a little bit low like i feel like i'm getting like uh, ha ha versus ha ha and i'm exaggerating but um okay. concept to wrap my head around head. like i'm not quite hearing head, head. I'm here to wrap my head to wrap my head well if i had to guess um which I might be way off because I'm really hard at doing this when the accent is because you mm -hmm. the accent is pretty good here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hearing a bit of like what I would assume is maybe Spanish or possibly Portuguese. This is, I think this is a bit. I think it's Farsi. Farsi. Okay, I have no experience with that, so apparently that's very similar <laughs> sounding. Um, but uh, I, I I do know that uh, many languages in my experience so far uh, mm -hmm. have that sort of push forward tone. Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about how like the, with the back of the tongue. Um, I'm thinking like head, it's sounding almost like it's kind of push maybe more towards the start of A a little bit, or it's just kind of like push forward, like mm. head, head, head. Yeah, almost head. into the A territory, right? A little bit. Yeah. Not quite, but uh, leaning. That yeah. Way. So maybe if you try to like just get that back of the tongue a little bit, um, maybe out of the way, like if it's kind of pushed forward a little bit, don't let it push forward. And you probably won't feel that. You got to play with it. Um, so instead of saying like head, head, like head, head. Head. Like mm -hmm. let it kind of flatten out a little mm -hmm. bit, um, and maybe come back a little bit. And yeah. might, might be better. Something else that can help with that too is closing the mouth a little bit more, kind of block off some awesome. of that air because a lot of yeah. air is coming through. 